Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Vangelis here with a review of the SIC Super Imaginative Chogokin Volume 57, Cyclone Joker, the common rider made from two dudes, and he's kind of super, and he's kind of imaginative, and he's also kind of Chogokin. This was the first double in the SIC line, and he really kicked it off in a big way, showing hints of a form split gimmick as well as his own form swap gimmick. So let's jump in and see how this figure stands up. Right off the bat, SIC Cyclone Joker hits you with a great combination of shining metallic green paint alongside flat matte black paint. The sculpt is not insanely eccentric, but I feel nicely warps the double design into a more cybernetic look. The lovely red compound eyes do help, of course. While it doesn't bother me, some may be sad to see that the line symmetry of the show design is lost here. What does bother me is the seam line around the head sculpt. I just... try not to look at it. The cyclone scarf is rendered in a really cool smoke translucent plastic. It's sizable enough to satisfy my healthy muffler lust. Looking at the posability of the SIC Cyclone Joker, uh, I was pleasantly surprised from the waist up. He's got a uh, really emotively decent ball jointed neck, and I believe there's another joint up here at the top of the neck. Uh, the shoulders are uh, on ball joints that feel way more solid than the older SIC ball joints, so uh, it's great to see that modern SIC sturdiness is still in existence here. Uh, double jointed hinged elbow, and uh, the, the wrist is on a ball joint and a hinge. Unfortunately, though, it's a little bit hindered by the wrist armor. It's hard to find a position where you can actually get a meaningful amount of usage out of the hinge, so that's a little bit of a bummer. Uh, in the chest, he's got a really good ab crunch. Uh, it's a combination ab crunch waist joint um, using a couple ball joints that are on a stem beneath the midsection. As you can see, the midsection actually is very loosely in place. That might bother some people. I don't mind it, but I know it has irritated others. And uh, this ab crunch allows for a lot of really deep motion, and I think this is fantastic. Uh, I love this kind of joint, especially in tandem with a good... Uh, neck joint, so well done there. Uh, the knees are double jointed, very solidly. The feet are a little bit limited given that they seem to be uh, on ball joint uh, deals, but the, the hinging, again, feels a little bit limited perhaps by the ankle armor. The disappointment though is in the uh, hips. Uh, there's a, a good thigh swivel, uh, but the hips are difficult because there's this rubbery um, detailing here that gets in the way, whoops, it's also easy to do that because there's a, a gimmick about that later on, but this rubbery detail is tricky because you can move the hips all the way, but it doesn't look very nice, and if you want, you can kind of get the leg piece underneath that skirt, but it's tricky. It doesn't really outright limit the posability per se, but it's difficult to, to use the leg joint without it looking a little bit odd, unless you limit it to only going out about this far. So uh, that's, that's, I think, probably the biggest con about the posability. Now, there's a double driver here, and you might have heard a clattering noise. That's because the little cyclone memory inside fell out while I was doing that posability showing. Uh, these Gaia memories are really cool, but they also are not gripping in here with any kind of friction at all. Uh, they are really loose and extremely easy to have fall out uh, while you're messing around with them. On the bright side, they look great, uh, and the double driver is, I think, a really well done little gimmick in, in the way of uh, having Gaia memories and folding up and stuff like that, but it's a bummer how easily they come out. Uh, on the bright side, if you do pull out the Joker memory, you can stick that in the little maximum slot over here, slide it in there, and uh, get your Joker Extreme on. And it's uh, pretty easy to pull out. I guess that's the small upside of the looseness is you don't have to worry about trying to use tweezers to pull the things out. On the bummer side though, you don't have to worry about um, pulling them out at all, you have to worry about them falling out. I do like that you can see the letters somewhat through here. Uh, the cyclone letters are a little bit difficult to see, but uh, I think it's a really well engineered little thing. I just wish that the tolerances were a little bit better. By the way, his scarf also is on a uh, big hinge and swivel, and the swivel has a few little clicks to how it how it moves, which means it's really good at staying out uh, at certain angles. If you put it all the way up and then try to use the hinge, there's a chance that it may eventually sort of droop down, but um, I think that the joint is tighter than these sort of joints tend to be, thanks to the slight amount of clickiness on the sideways motion. 
You still might want to tighten it up a little bit with some floor polish if you really need this thing to be sticking like up and out like this all the time, but there are workarounds. Um, posability wise, I would definitely say this dude's totally okay. Cyclone Joker does come with a multitude of alternate hands, and swapping them is pretty simple. You just pull it off the little ball joint and then uh, stick the other hand right in there. If you do want to get this hinge oriented a certain way, sometimes it might be easier to actually remove this thing and then bend it a bit and twist it around to, uh, to determine if you want to be bending up and down or in and out. But uh, swapping the hands I found not to be too difficult. Uh, it does feel though like if you're not careful, this part might, might eventually slide off. Mine just feels like it's a little bit jiggly in there. Uh, but overall, this feels pretty solid, and it seems a lot easier to do than on the SH Figure Arts uh, Cyclone Joker. Now, how many different hands does he come with? Well, he's got those open hands that you saw before, as well as fists for punching bad guys. He also has a couple of hands that are totally in the henshin pose scenario of having two fingers kind of out. And he also has holding things hands, which can hold Gaia memories theoretically. You see, the holding things hands are really meant for some other accessories I'll talk about later in the video. You can kind of position a Gaia memory in there if you're very careful, but it's extremely chintzy and you're kind of relying on plastic tolerances and, and most of the time it just doesn't fit in there. But there is a right hand for holding Gaia memories, which works decently. Uh, the Gaia memories fit in there, they look alright in there, but uh, it can be a little bit tricky getting them... Uh, in place, mostly because they're so tiny. You kind of have to slot them in a certain way and then twist them afterwards to get them to stay in there. There's also a pointing hand for the Joker side. Uh, this is basically just so he can point at you and let you know that he's about to count up your sins. Now, aside from the hilariously obvious differences in aesthetic choices in the design, the next obvious thing you'll notice is that the SIC Cyclone Joker stands a good head and a half or two taller than the SH Figure Art Cyclone Joker. So just in case you've not seen a size comparison between the two lines before, there you go. The only real double-centric difference I'd like to point out would probably be the size of the scarf. Now, uh... This scarf here is big and satisfying. This scarf here is tiny and piddling. Uh, that's certainly not meant to be a slam on the figure arts uh, version. It's just that um, I really like that the hanging loose version of the scarf uh, on the SIC is so much bigger. And that it can double function for so many different poses. Uh, I know that the Cyclone set gives you a much bigger scarf for the figure arts version. But I like how self-contained the SIC one is. It's just a, a really well done bit of muffler action. Now, so far, you've seen a pretty decent little self-contained figure. If uh, there's one other problem I could cite, it would probably be the way that the uh, the shoulder pad there looks when you have an, his arm pointed up. It is a little bit funny looking. I'm not going to deny it. However, he is reaching up for something in particular, and that something would be the Extreme Memory. Uh, he can transform into Cyclone Joker Extreme. How does he do it? Well... You do need to disassemble that extreme memory little bird guy and uh, attach him to this specialized other double driver. But things do not stay so simple, ladies and gentlemen. No, aside from this guy, aside from the extreme memory and its little double driver, you're also going to need all of this mess right here. Uh, this is starting to make me have flashbacks to older SIC toys. It's starting to give me flashbacks to trying to put the costume onto Equip and Change SIC Garo. Oh, good lord. Let's get this started. At first glance, the form swap to Cyclone Joker Extreme looks like a classic SIC nightmare of stripping the figure down to its core and rebuilding it layer by layer. I was pleasantly surprised to discover that the process, while just as intense, was far more easy and intuitive than older SIC figures I've messed with. While you have to exchange a lot of parts, a majority of them are both obvious and simple to swap. The only spot that gets a bit tricky is the crotch, and let's face it, handling a common Rider's codpiece will never be as easy as it sounds. SIC Cyclone Joker Extreme takes way more liberties with the original design, adding more angles and giant shoulder pads, among other things. 
I am very sure I'm in the minority here, but aesthetically, I really enjoy this take on Extreme. I love the pointy angles, and I am really into the way that the torso armor almost looks like an open suit jacket. The clear central detailing is done just like the Fig Arts version, with clear sculpted plastic over silver painted underlay components. This construction method looks so damn cool in person. Cyclone Joker Extreme has the same posability as Cyclone Joker. Uh, despite having full-on limb swaps and everything, it all still works the same way. The shoulder pads are actually uh, even better at uh, covering for uh, any kind of weirdness when they raise up, just because they're so huge. Uh, they fill out the gap here a little bit more and don't look quite as odd. Uh, there is one problem, though. Uh, I mean, first up, that same hip uh, finickiness is here with this collision of parts that just gets in the way of comfortable posing uh, beyond a few more uh, neutral poses uh, as far as his hips go. Uh, that jiggliness in the midsection piece is not only pr uh, present here, but it's actually a little bit worse because the top of this piece gets hooked underneath the... Uh, biceps and often will suck up inside there and leave you with this very strange looking gap. Uh, you can fix it by kind of pulling the joint off uh, a little bit. You don't actually have to rip it off like I just did. I'm, you know, I'm just uh, a strong little boy. But uh, it is very easy for this jiggly part to get stuck in there, which really makes you wish this actually secured itself to the stem within. Uh, something that was implemented on later SIC doubles. As far as additional hands go, he's only got the same number of hands as the Cyclone Joker body does, because he uses the same set of hands. There are no dedicated hands for Cyclone Joker Extreme. However, the focus has just gone nuts. Let's just bring it back in here. Cyclone Joker Extreme is the form that makes almost exclusive use of the Holding Things hands as he comes with a very teched out version of the Prism Bicker. Uh, check this thing out. This is like the Prism Bicker put onto awesome SIC steroids. Uh, if there was one problem with it, it would be that the Prism Sword doesn't really have a way of locking in. But that aside, I just love all this, like, greebly nuts on the back. Like, this could have all just been a big smooth thing, but no, this is a crazy-ass piece of SIC machinery. And uh, these uh, little slots here can, in fact, accept Gaia memories. Um, the Joker and Cyclone memories from uh, the Cyclone Joker form will slide right in there quite happily. And on the bright side, uh, I found that these slots are way more solid for holding the memories in than the actual double driver. And I was worried about this because some of them actually point downwards. Now, here's the thing. You also get a heat memory with the set because uh, there are certain four memories that tend to go with the Prism Bicker when it comes to using it for a big, crazy final attack. So you also get a Luna memory. Um, the Luna memory is the only one that I find looks really weird in here, only because the L is so much more stylized. But if we take uh, an obscenely close look at the, uh, the slots within, you can see that you can see the L and the H, the J and the C. Uh, so that's really cool, I think, that they included all those memories um, to, to work with this. And you can stick those memories into the belt, too, just that with, with this set, there's no real point. Uh, the Prism Sword also comes out, and uh, this dude can hold the accessories decently. Uh, the, the shield is tricky, because it is heavy, and it will weigh down the elbow joint in, in many poses. I find if you actually uh, flip it around like this and use it a bit more as a buckler... Uh, it, it works a little bit better. The Prism Sword is quite easy to fit into into his hand, though. And, uh, oh, I, I forgot to mention, because I always leave it in here. There is also a Prism Memory. Uh, and, and guess what? It is removable. Although, why would you ever want to do that? Because you'll just lose it, and there's, there's nowhere to put it, except inside the sword's handle. So, uh, Cyclone Joker Extreme is really decently armed, and I love how enormous uh, his equipment looks. It looks way more substantial on him than the Figure Arts version's more show-accurate Prism Bicker. This looks like a serious uh, sword and shield combination, and I really dig it. So Cyclone Joker Extreme is, to me, a pretty good success of a figure. The only downside is... Uh, here comes the SIC curse. You've got this figure, and then you've got... Almost a figure 
splayed all over the place right here. Literally, the only thing missing is a tiny inner skeletal frame. SIC likes to do this to try to convince you to buy two sets. So you can display both forms fully. And it's always so frustrating how they give you everything except for that tiny little frame. Volume 57 here does in fact offer a surprisingly merciful solution, which comes in the form of these mysterious, twisted, and slightly disturbing looking components. Do you know what these do? Can you guess? Is it not entirely obvious? A storage solution turned display option, these half frames allow you to not only plug most of the leftover body parts somewhere, but also deliver the Joker Extreme Maximum Drive visual in physical form. Attaching the components works more or less identically to suiting up the posable base body and is similarly very easy to do. Oh, check it out, I've just made another Cyclone Joker figure, whatever. Oh no, wait, you can split him in half and look at all this really weird detail inside, done up in gold. Uh, I really like this idea. It's a great way to get around SIC's usual habit of giving you all kinds of leftover bits and pieces that are missing exactly one little f uniting frame to put them together. Um, this is great. Uh, it's kind of tricky to stand these up on their own, but thanks to the, the little uh, pelvis peg down here, you can kind of mush them together in a way where they can sort of stand a little bit balanced. This is, uh, if, if there was a way to make these stick together a bit more solidly, you'd basically have uh, a decent looking Cyclone Joker figure who only lacks any kind of posability down this part of his body, uh, since it reuses the arms and legs. Thankfully, you do get this included stand with a really heavy ratchet clicky part in the bottom and the specialized bits and pieces here that plug into the little black holes uh, on here. And uh, once you slide these in, which which slide in very tightly, these are real nice connections, then you totally have a reclining Cyclone Joker. Uh, this is not the, the crux of it though. Basically, you can totally uh, make him look like he's doing the Joker Extreme attack. You can even use this stand and twist it slightly to uh, have them just a little bit offset from each other. Uh, the only bummer here, posability-wise, is I wish that the heads could tilt forward a bit to look down. Because as it is, it, it, it does kind of look like he's not really looking where he's going. He's just all like, duh! Um, now, this all looks well and good, especially since with uh, these guys, you know, chilling out here looking really disturbing. And with Cyclone Joker Extreme hanging out here looking all ready to go, you'd think, hey, I can finally have an SIC set with both forms posed at once. And I didn't have to buy it twice. Well, you certainly wish that, don't you? There are a few little faults. Number one, you might notice that the split set here does not have a maximum drive slot. That's because you have to cannibalize the one off of here if you want that to appear on there. Granted, Extreme looks totally fine without one, but this does affect the uh, accuracy of the design look, and it kind of bugs me a little bit. Also, you'll see that there's no uh, Joker memory sculpted into the really cool uh, specialized midriff bits here. Although I don't know why the half double drivers can spin. That's because you're supposed to stick a Joker memory into the maximum drive slot. I mean, that's what they're doing right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's the problem. Uh, you have to take that out of here. They don't give you an extra one. Uh, granted, it's really hard to notice whether or not it's even in there. So, you know, that's not a big deal either. I'll just, uh, well, I'll drop it and lose it forever in my shag carpeting. But, uh, no, I don't have to worry about that. Uh, here's the last thing. You see these awesome bicep covers? That's great and all. Problem is, you only get one set of them. So if you want to display these guys at the same time, you have to hide these really weird emaciated looking skeleton shoulders. Granted, Cyclone Joker Extreme is really good at doing that because his shoulder pads are gigantic. Uh, but it's a bummer. Like, just that, that little thing of not providing, you know, one more set of these bicep covers. It just feels like, despite all this great work that's done to uh, minimize the amount of spare parts you've got lying around, they're still doing that SIC thing of like, oh, by the way, if you really want everything to work all together, you've got to buy a second set anyway for, like, three tiny parts, which sucks. Uh, also, uh, for everything I said about this being great part storage, you do, do still have some leftover bits and pieces, especially these uh, midriff bits, because these are specialized ones for that frame. And uh, the, the little silver uh, inner middle bits are also all left over. Granted, this is nowhere near as bad an amount of parts piling as you might have on any other... Uh, old-timey SIC. So, I'm okay with this. 
it's just a bummer that uh, for for everything it did, there's just like the maximum drive slot in the biceps. If those three pieces had been duplicated, this would have been awesome. It would have been awesomer if they just provided a second tiny little inner frame in there, but yeah, whatever. It's uh, kind of a bummer. At the same time, though, it also takes so many strides, so I'm, I'm of two minds about it. Uh, speaking of that display stand, if you remove the half-and-half uh, half really weird divided double and the uh, connecting piece that's holding the two parts together, you're left with this, and, you know, for everything I've been saying, they do cover you in so many ways, because you do get all these pieces to stick on here, and uh, either, you know, extend how high that Joker Extreme pose is off of the ground, or use this thing as just a normal, like, Tamashi stage. Uh, you can stick, like, uh, you know, this dude in here, clip it around his waist, and boom, you have a display option in place. Uh, I really like the included stand. I wish there was some way for the stand to be included uh, in the package on more of these styles of figures, but... Um, I'm okay with it not appearing all the time because, you know, it's budget for sure. Uh, although I'm sure that this thing did not personally cause the lack of all those little bits I was just complaining about. But it's nice that you get a full display stand with this set. It really helps make the Cyclone Joker set feel like a self-contained package that is easy to enjoy on its own without needing other double SICs to get the most out of it. SIC Cyclone Joker is a very solid package and almost as solid a figure. For your money, you get a very good amount of stuff. Between a form-swappable main figure with loads of accessories, the Joker Extreme display option slash part storage, and an included display stand. The main faults lie in the crowded areas around the hip joints, the looseness of the Gaia memories in the belt, and Cyclone Joker Extreme's very jiggly midsection. It also just sucks that only one set of bicep covers was provided, regardless of the easy workaround. All those cons feel like lingering remnants of the older days of SIC that I had hoped would be nullified by now. Regardless of that, I do think this is a worthwhile figure set, and I really enjoy it as a fun and decently solid SIC experience. Just consider how much you feel its faults will sour that experience for your own tastes before you go through with picking it up. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and I hope this review has been of assistance to you in some manner. This is only the beginning, ladies and gentlemen, as there are more SIC Kamen Rider double sets to look at, and I'm gonna look at them. There's a reason why this review has a dash A on the end. Anyway, I'll be back with more of this soon, so I uh, hope you have a lovely time. And maybe the next time we meet, you'll have counted up all of your sins. I've got too many myself. I just did one the other day, in fact. It was... it was worth it. So worth it. <laughs>